Yeah. All right. I am Joe Stevens. I'm one of the songwriters for Stability of Album Cashier. I'm Sydney Bullens, and I play older Albert. I'm Danny Shea, and I play young Albert. I'm Kim J. Frederick, and I'm a part actor. Joe, what happened? How did this show get started? Um, I, I got an email from some character talking about writing a musical, and I, which I ignored for a few <laughs> weeks because I thought this is a clown. No, I, I said, like, I don't. I don't write show tunes. You haven't listened to my music, correct? And I, I said, you know, can, can I do it in like an Americana style? And they they agreed to that. So I was like, okay, well, that's the arm. And now, like eight years later, here we are. So you worked on it for that first year, and then I came on board seven years ago. Right. So you were eight years ago. Seven years ago, I fell in love with the story. I fell in love with Albert. Um, really connect on a deep level and connect with you and Keaton and Jay and everybody involved. We did a reading and then a full production in Chicago and Cameron and I were both a part of that and he and I just bonded so deeply. We've done readings, multiple readings and then you came along. Uh, Say this, I just have to interrupt, it's one of the rare, you know, older than me trans guys who sings and writes songs professionally. And there just has he's like the one. Mm-hmm. So as far as like mentors or anybody to ask questions to, you, like, it's y'all. Yeah. Love to bring you in. We've been chatting over here. So yeah. about you. When did you yeah. come? Yeah. I'm the newbie. Um, I also instantly fell in love with the music. I was just blown away, and it's like nothing I've ever ever heard. I was like, I went on a like a late night drive and I played through other things that were on the website and I just I was like crying. I was like, I don't know these people yet or what I don't know the entirety of this story, but I felt something like a full body yes. And you're like, are you sure? Are you sure? I was like, yes. Like you stop asking me if I'm sure. <laughs> yes. A million percent of yeah. the, the journey. Uh, it, it can be viewed through through a trans lens, which I looked through that right away. Um, but it's it's so much bigger than that. It's it's um, yeah, yeah. The thing is a couple different like kind of identity uh, lines that cross like we've got gender non-conforming people, there's young people, there's veterans, there's soldiers, people uh, of color. you know, people of color, and then, and then aging. And, and, um, it's got so much vulnerability to it, and, and that's what I had, the emotion um, through the music and, and the script and the show itself. But to me, as older Albert, when you do reach a certain age, you, you do say to yourself, what am I going to be remembered for? And as a trans person who transitioned very late in life, I had a whole life as a woman. I was a grandparent already when I transitioned. One of the wonderful things about this play is that identity is kind of what you were saying, is such a big part of this. It's, well, in the show, older Albert is clinging to his identity. And young Albert and old Albert want people to know that he's a soldier. Right. That he fought. That he fought. The show is about humanity shown in different identities and how those identities play off each other and what's important to those people. I feel like my whole life I've been searching for language that was like unknown to me or that I, that I also didn't have. I think that it's it's really inspiring to to see and read and hear about that Albert didn't have a roadmap or a blueprint yeah. of any kind and he just was. And we don't know how he would, if he were alive today, how he would identify. Yeah, right. That was a big discussion point. To, yeah. to frame him. In the beginning, we we, so like, we had the script, and, and I, I knew that we needed some sort of like unified statement about you know what we know is that he wanted to be called Albert, so we'll call him Albert. Right. You know, and then and then clearly he wanted to be called he, so we'll call him. The story is so poignant, and because here we sit, 
as people who don't fit into a binary gender category. Um, and yet, there's so much history that we don't know about. I am not sure that I can give you a specific moment that I see the audience responding to more than other moments or the most. Um, but I feel that this show, there are large lessons and teachings of agency and autonomy, which I think can reach people through all different avenues. And I think uh, that that's what makes this story relatable to all different kinds of people. It's all, the whole journey is just so deep. And then there's other characters who have such deep things yeah, to add exactly. to it as well that we haven't even gotten into. So we won't even have, we won't. We'll save it. And yet, I'm starving to death. Yeah. Yeah. The audience is getting you butt to love seats right there. That's right. Tread Thank by you. my father when he was a young man, following the sound. He had always known he'd have to work a little harder.